And we're live! Hello, and welcome to episode 108 of the uh, Ever Going Fans of Power podcast. Uh, I'm Tyler T. Rex Baker, and uh, the Rotten Amato himself is here, Joe Amato, and Doug Turner is here with us, always in spirit. And oh. we want to welcome you to a, a new edition of uh, more He Man Talk, Shiver Talk. It, we're, we're gonna we cover it all in this podcast if you haven't figured that out by this point so there you go all right and we have a, a few people in the chat room right now we have gsp he's ready to go we got tom charlton so thank you both for joining us and oh lewis coronado he just popped up so uh <laughs> yeah he said man this podcast comes out at the same time as walking dead well hey you can always record walking dead and get back to it if you want and kevin castillo thank you for joining us as well so and we got some people, and hopefully more will be popping up. But, um, yeah, we got a lot of Masters talk in this episode and a chance for you guys to win uh, the unofficial Leech mini comic. You're going to have actually two chances at it. Tyler will be doing his later on. And I did my – oh, hey, how you doing, J.D. Gibson? He's in the chat room as well. So, um, All right. Well, we got a good turnout. Yeah, we got a, turn, a good turnout. So, um, well, last week I asked a trivia question that, well, nobody got. I got a lot of messages of people saying, man, I checked this, I checked that, I checked that. They're trying to get hints from me. I'm like, I'm not going to give you a hint. I'm not going to give you a hint. So say, I described the image last week. What I'm going to do right now is just say that after this episode's over, on the Fans of Power podcast Facebook page, I'm going to post an image thing I was describing last week. And if you can, the image comes from, then you can win a, a copy of the unofficial Leech mini comic. But I described it, nobody got it, and I was for sure somebody would have got it. But uh, at least once they see, I guarantee you, once they see this image, bam, it's going to hit them so quick, and they'll immediately know where that came from. So I'll, I'll post that, like I said, after the episode's over, and later Tyler's going to be doing his trivia. So there's two chances you guys might, uh, I mean, two chances you had. Somebody might actually win them, you know, both mini comics. You never know. <laughs> oh no no no! We're only going to get one, one, one. We want multiple people. We want you know a copy to go to one person. Yeah, you know, what limit limit one one copy per per fan because we want to we want to make sure that uh you know uh, hey, they might share the, what's that they might share the love they might pay it forward if they win hey let's say they want them both of them they might pay it forward to another fan but no I know what you mean you you know you hope that two uh, people get the chance I mean if, if for some odd reason only one person gets both questions and nobody else you know you know may consider it but i i, I would rather it be multiple winners so that way multiple people have each gotten a copy there man and for mine as well you have to post this on the fans of power facebook page you cannot contact me <laughs> and to add, give me ask for hints and tell me what you think it is or same thing with joe you must post it in the fans of power facebook page yeah, because I got a lot. I got a lot of people, but uh, so hopefully somebody will get it. Before we get into the two topics, though, you know, we always uh, encourage, you know, fans, if you guys have questions or something you'd like to ask us or something you'd want us to discuss, you know, you know, feel free to. And there's two people in particular I was going to cover today. Uh, one was coming from well, our buddy right here in the uh, chat room, Tom Charlton. He asked, he said, new vintage style figures from Super 7. He says, what do you guys hope they do? He says, just more filmation variants, old unreleased characters like the Powercom guys that came out recently, Malak, the Star Sisters. He's like, what you, you know, what you think? Well, uh, well, I'll let you ask that or answer that first, Tyler, and then I'll give some some of my thoughts of what I'm hoping to see from Super Seven in the vintage five and a half inch style. Um, I mean, I'm always gonna, you know, I mean, filmation characters like you know, uh, Strong Arm and, and Fang Man and uh, characters Icer. Lizard Man. Lizard Man, yeah. There again, but I, I would also, if I had a choice, I would like for Super Seven to follow the 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 the, the business plan of or the, the plan of the original plan of characters that we were supposed to have gotten in eighty eight and eighty nine. Like what you know, if if um Slammerai and Lord Grass, Plasmar and Terror, whatever they're in their original names. What if those were planned along with the 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 Snakeman Horde Troopers? That's what I would like Super Seven to give to us adventures because that's what we were supposed to get. So that's what I would like us to get along with expanding the powers of Grayskull toy line with getting giving you know Hero and Eldor. 
whatever was supposed to come down the line, if they have documentation and images of what was supposed to have happened and that, that I would like to get what we were supposed to get, you know, not necessarily, um, make it more filmation friendly and do stuff. I mean, yes, that's awesome too. I think it just would be interesting for us to get what we were planned to get. Yeah. Cause you know, things are kind of, they're different meaning, you know, nowadays, of course you hear a lot of people say, man, I want filmation, this filmation, that, you know, because it's things they can relate to. But I remember when I was a kid, I was more giddy just going into that damn toy aisle and just being excited about, wow, they just showed a whole bunch of new stuff you've never heard of. Like, here comes Clamp Champ and here comes Squeeze and Blast Attack and Ninja. You're like, what are these figures? I don't know who they are, but I love them. So, sure, I would love to see, uh, you know, the ones that, you know, we know could have came, like you said, Lord Grasp and, you know, Slamurai or whatever they call them or any of those, you know, concept figures. And, of course, I'm excited for Hero and Eldor. But, sure, I would invite some more characters based off of mini comics like Lodar, Prince Dacon, yeah. maybe the, the Masks of Power demons if they would have made those into two separate figures. I mean, of course, and welcoming Filmation and anything else that might have been, prototype, you know, prototypes or what they had planned. So, to me, it, it's... I, you know, it's it's a shame that you know we can't have that that excitement and that um, the surprise factor that we had back then because there was no internet when we were growing up and they didn't even talk about this stuff in the magazines. It was just you were just bam shocked when you went to the toy store. I miss that because that's what I'd love. I would love for them just bam to show something you know just randomly. Of course, you know half the time we do see stuff it's like oh wait I never heard of that but. I guess that's what I miss about the toy aisles. You know, you go in the toy aisles and bam, you're just shocked and shown. But uh, yeah, if they could just hit us and surprise us with something completely random and different, I think it'd be amazing. But yeah, I, I'm really excited about the five and, inch, or five and a half inch line and hopefully they can really have that flourish along with having, you know, classics for, you know, everybody. They have all the fans that they're hitting. But yeah, I'm giddy yeah, about that. Hell is going to take advantage of this and, and not, you know, be skittish and scared and cold feet and, and make it complicated. I hope they're embracing that, you know, whether it's doing numbers that they don't notice or not, the fact is that this line is still being kept alive by people who are clawing and clawing at the remainder of characters that are out there that are oblivious to your casual fan that were, you know, the hardcore fans are still keeping this thing alive, you know, and outnumbering, obviously, people who are, bitching and complaining about, I don't know who any of these people are, and they're not getting my money, and blah, 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 and they're not trap drawing Ram Man. <laughs> no, yeah, so, so it's it's awesome whatever they, like he's, like you said, whatever they can have planned. First, I wanted to say, Eric Glenn, welcome to the chat room. He's, you know, he said, hey, how's it going, fellas? So thank you for joining us, Eric Glenn. Appreciate having you here as well. But, you know, you know, like how they rumored or, or saying that, you know, they're, going to maybe try to possibly if Mattel has something to where they can get involved to where these five and a half inch figures could return to retail like you know possibly Target, Toys R Us, Walmart you know those kind of retail outlets. The the thing that I wish I could do because you know how I am it's hard to avoid certain things especially Masters I know that it'd be slammed in my face because everybody in the world would tag me but as everybody well as Tyler knows I don't know if everybody else knows I don't like like let's say trailers for movies for TV shows, anything. I don't like previews. I avoid them like the plague. I do not want to see them. I change the channel for on TV. If somebody hints something on Facebook or anywhere, I don't look. I would love a surprise factor, meaning let's say they announced, and I know it never happened because, it, like I said, I'd see it, but let's say they announced some new five and a half inch figures. And I said, Tyler, don't tell me. And everybody out there, please don't tell me what it is. I would love it if I could walk into the stores you know, just knowing, say, Joe, go to the store, there's new figures, and just see some just shit, I mean, stuff just bam, pop up, that I would never expect. I See, I miss it. I, I can't say it enough. I yeah, miss it. You, you just defeated the purpose with what you just said, that you want somebody to come along and tell you, hey, Joe, there's new figures. But not what they are. Just say, Joe. If, if, if they weren't telling you that there's something out there, you wouldn't be left to the traditional, original idea of you just Born on a, or, or you know what, you're already at Walmart getting, you know, uh, another, you know. Uh, well, which would be cool. Black yeah. those in preparation H. And you said, you know what, I'll have time to run by the toy aisle and then be surprised by what's there. But that would be fun. But you see, still I want someone to inform you that, that they're out, though. Your time. 
yeah, I want them to at least let me know they're out and released, meaning I'd hate that I'd miss the chance. You know, like hypothetically, let's say they came out and then I had no clue they were out at the stores and I went and I just kept missing them and then eventually they popped up. I would at least want to know the date. Like if there's a release date and they're definitely there, tell me to go and then I'm just shocked with what I'd see. The thing will never happen like that because I know I'm going to see what comes out. But uh, Yeah, you tell me just at this point, day and age, you want to waste time. I'd like to know... I mean, you're already going to be wasting enough time as it is when you are aware they're out there. You get there, and there's one left. Now you got to keep running from store to store, and you don't know. You're already going to be wasting your time trying to find certain ones or all of them. And here you are. You think you just, it's so much more easier to, for Joe just to – nobody tell me. Nobody. Like I said, you, hey. you, I mean, what – I could Man, dream for you, you. Just you just it must enjoy wasting your own time. Then I do. I do. Hunt for toys is not hard enough. I'm a big time waster. I'm a big time waster. God, so, man. Ah, there you go. I could dream for the good old days. Like I said, it'll, it'll never happen because whatever comes out will be plastered everywhere. So, but hey, but I when could you dream. were a child, you 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 don't you know it's like you, you got you got time to spare and things like that. When you're an adult, I don't have time to waste. I don't. I'll admit, have time running from multiple store to store to store and store and you know it's it's hard enough when you know they're out and you're being told they're in stores now people you just got to keep going around and look and i'm like the hunt used to be it was fun it was fun i mean i admit the hunt used to be fun like when 2000x was at the store i did like the hunt that you know uh ah, hell um you know that that you know had you not known i mean about any of that stuff not knowing that, oh, well, at this point, Mechanic is available. It well, is I mean, well, that's the thing. I mean, yeah, I guess, sure, I knew about that. But I think what, okay, some of the weird things was I remember seeing those crazy weird color variants, like when they had Blood Skeletor, Disco Skeletor, and some of the others. Like, yeah, but even though I bought everything because I was such a junkie to make sure I didn't, I, I didn't repeat the mistake of missing out on so much as a kid, I mean, you know, that it, it was just out of desperation. I, it, it was nowhere near the excitement of, of finding out that too bad. And Cyclone and Mechanet and Buzz Off and Merman were available on the shelf. The color variants, it was like, this is not as good as getting an original character. But sure, this sure. No, agreed. It was still kind of weird and kind of cool. Not, that's not, not going to be the case. I'm sick and tired of when you're looking for, you know, uh, the um, one comes to mind is, is the current Ninja Turtle line, which is, you know, eventually be ending with the cartoon ending and all that stuff, too. But when the shells are packed with, you know, multiple variants and you're just looking for Yusagi Yojimbo or you're looking for, you know, I mean, they've got repaints of characters they've already done before, including like Shredder and Razar and Razar. And you're just looking for original characters like, God, man, it's just like, you know, enough of the, the variant stuff. Right. For, for no, I know. Us. No, you're right. I mean, it can be quite annoying. I also did want to say hello to Jackie Miller who joined us in the chat room. Thank you for joining us as well. So. And we got a lot of people. So, Tom, we appreciate that question. Like I said, it's always fun. It starts getting our minds, you know, going and spinning and all the thoughts and everything. So that's from Tom. And I, the, and personally, I would love it, too, if they continue this and we get the Cosmic Key roleplay toy that we were supposed to have gotten back. <laughs> yeah, year. yeah, that would have been something else. That would have been. Uh, but, uh, okay, now we have from a YouTuber. It's uh, Stephen Brickafole. He says, um, let me get to it. He's like, just left to comment, he said, but I, he wanted to elaborate upon it. He said, he's always been torn about, especially the Horde. He said about where do they actually belong? He said at first as a kid, you know, he said the, wait, hold on, my screen almost went off. Sorry. Okay. So like the Horde was a faction of villains to fight, you know, that, you know, with old master with Skeletor. And, you know, you, he said then as a kid, he also remembers Shiva, the cartoon, the Horde was the enemy of Anatheria. He said, so for him, he was wondering like, you know, where did we kind of think they belonged or where do we place them back then or even now? But, you know, that, that's, that's something. I mean, sure, I remember when the toys, I mean, I love playing with, you know, it's just, it felt like there were two different, well, versions of the Horde. Sure, we started finding years later about what their original thoughts were behind the figures and where they belonged. But no, when I played with them, you know, as a kid, I mean, the Horde, it just felt like they were part of Masters of the Universe because, hell, when you bought them, they were on the Masters of the Universe card. And when we seen them in cartoon form, yes, they were now on She-Ra and they belong there. So it's it's strange. It's like, I, I don't really know where I'd say I would say they belong because I felt like, to me, I had two kind of versions. You had the toys, which had a whole different type of story from the mini comics because, you know, it just, 
well, in those mini comics for Masters of the Universe, it wasn't about She-Ra. It was about them with Masters. But then watching the cartoon, I absolutely loved the Horde with Princess of Power and She-Ra. And I guess that would be, sure, we love the toys, but I think maybe that's what people remember most about the Horde, I would think, might be Filmation. I mean, who doesn't remember always, you know, Horde Act transform into all those different things, Mantana, Imp, Shadow Weaver. So maybe you would feel like they belonged more with Princess of Power because maybe that's what they were showing more to us in our face. I mean, the toys, yes, it immediately makes me think of He-Man, but I guess the Horde in general, I, I, I relate them more to, I guess, you know, She-Ra and Etheria. I mean, at least me, maybe that's where I think I put them at. Um, I, I can't really say one more than the other. Um, I did wonder for a brief time as a child why wasn't, they, why, why weren't they featured in the He-Man book? You know, I enjoyed the She-Ra cartoon so much as a kid, and when He-Man does show up, I mean, that that's... I was just I was just so glad to see the Horde running around, and I didn't really question it when, you know, as, as a youngster and seeing that She-Ra is connected to He-Man without seeing a lot of crossover episodes or even seeing the Secret of the Sword. Um, I mean, I, I was just happy to have both. It, not, it wasn't something that I, I, I really... Uh, thought a great deal about and knowing when I got older that when the she cartoon comes out they're releasing the last batch of the of the uh, season two episodes of He-Man and then they're done with that and focusing on she -Ra. see it makes sense from a uh, marketing standpoint when you've got the 85 wave of toys coming out you'd feature you know the you know you know the evil warriors and the new heroic warriors in the last batch of he-man episodes and then you feature this new faction of villains in a brand new cartoon with the new new group of heroes i got all that you know and and it just worked that way too that when snout spout and uh the rock warriors and what would be rio blast colonel blast and <laughs> right. some of the state men are like well we're done with he-man we'll feature it in this connected he-man universe too so it it's hard for me to sit and wonder about that because when I, I kind of put it all together as to why things happened the way they did, it's, I, it's, I, I like what they did. I, I get it. I mean, it would have been great for the He-Man cartoon to be going on with new episodes at the same time as She-Ra and have She-Ra come to Eternia yeah. and vice versa and the Horde show up on Eternia and not just in Secret of the Sword. Um, but, you know, it's uh, it, w it wasn't too confusing to me. It, it just, it was just like, he made uh, Hordak in the mini comics and Hordak and Shira. It, it was pretty simplistic. I, it, it not, I didn't really, I don't really have a, an extreme elaborate answer about that. I, I, I'm quite content with how it turned out because I, we can all have our own idea of what we would have liked to have seen, but given what happened, I like what we were given. So I have no real uh, complaints or concerns as, as to like, it should have been done this way. Or I, I think maybe that way should have been, should have been um, the way to go. Um, I think it worked out great. My only complaints is some of those later characters that showed up should have been given better treatment, you know? Like, you know, what we'll get into later on with Snout Spout. Like, I wish the Rock Warriors had been given a much more, you know, it was, it just kind of felt like, you know, certain characters were given better treatment, as we've said before, than others. And, and, um, it's, it's kind of a shame that, you know, the, la the, the latter characters, like Tongue Lasher and Ratlord, you know, weren't given the, I mean, they're good, but, you know, you kind of feel like we could have gotten better, but no, that's my I, Yeah, because like I said, I mean, I just always seen them as kind of a, you know, I had my t two different versions of them, because when I would play with the Horde figures, with my Masters Universe figures and read the mini comics, I felt like it was a whole different Horde, and then when I watched it on the, you know, the cartoon with Princess of Power, that was a completely separate one as well. You know, I, obviously you see that the Princess Power line, yes, was geared towards girls because, you know, none of them looked scary or frightening. Even Catra was a jealous beauty. She looked happy and pretty like the other heroic or, you know, the, the good girls. So there, there were no villains. You know, you'd wonder, well, what could that have been like if the Horde and, let's say, Shadow Weaver and, you know, Scorpia and Octavia, if, if they would have been finally put... I, it's hard for me to picture Scorpion and Octavia being done in that Princess's power line. That's I, what I meant. That's why they... Yeah, they, yeah, I, they I avoided it. It would have looked very good. I mean, I'm sure they probably would have done something drastic and gave us, you know, something for you to calm on Scorpion. Yeah, you know? I mean, that line, like I said, it was just different. It was like, even that could have been for other people, could have been different 
again, in their canons, like the Princess of Power toys felt absolutely nothing like it would have been for the cartoon. Like I said, I never had those figures as a kid, but my girlfriend, she had them, you know, and I seen what they looked like, and they were like dolls. They were geared towards girls, so it was kind of like the the girl line, but then the cartoon felt like, you know, stronger, like, you know, guys could watch it and girls and everybody. It was a whole separate feel, so it's weird. It's weird. The cartoon of She-Ra compared to the toys, and the same thing with Masters Universe Horde compared to the cartoon with the Horde. I guess you had your own different versions, and hell, I mean, that's what's great is there's always so many different canons you can enjoy and love them all, you know, or you know, people can pick and choose. Yeah, and uh, now that we're thinking, about it, I, I almost could figure Scorpio would have been released in the He-Man toy line. She looks you like know, she would have been a villain that could have fit in. Yeah, really good. I, I feel like Shadow Weaver you may have could have gotten away with in the Princess of Power line, but even then, I feel like her look would have been a little bit too demonic for a toy line where your every character has hair you can comb. Yeah. So. I think it might be kind of a too much of a stress for Shadow Weaver. See, I, I kind of feel like that. I think that that would have been the extent of it. You'd have probably gotten maybe more uh, more heroic characters, maybe even some of the Twiggets or something like that, like Spratini. You probably could have combed her hair or something. Mm -hmm. But I think the rest of the Horde, you know, Scorpion, Shadow Weaver, and and uh, you know, I mean, we're supposed to get Dialamog, and he he was a, a He Man character too, so. Yeah, I, I think it still would have been a, a dominant female line. It, it, even Seahawk. I mean, can you picture Seahawk being released in that line? They would have did him like both. They would have gave him that smaller buck, and it that's how he would have been done if they would have did him. And yeah, because Seahawk, I mean, I'm sorry, Bo, I mean, Bo even got, you know, toned down. Not super big and muscular, smaller, more slim. I, you know, I don't think he had the must. no, no mustache. I know so mustache, but, um, I mean, I, I don't know. I, I, even though I, Bo comes off as a bit more of a swashbuckler, as he, of course, the cartoon. The, it, it, what, it's almost like we're, we're kind of arguing in circles here simply because the cartoon was meant for boys and girls. The toy line was meant just for girls. The He-Man toy line was meant for boys, even though girls were playing with those as well. So there was, there was two defined markets and then one unified market, and that was the cartoon. So, you know, I... It's it's hard to say where they would have gone with that, you know. Always yeah. interesting. Always the thoughts yeah. of what I mean, could have yeah. been. We, we could be kind of going down to way down the rabbit hole if we keep going with that one. Right, but either way, I mean, like I said, every single you know incarnation is great. I mean, you can love them all. You can pick and choose, but you know, none of them are bad. They're all something you can enjoy. But yeah. well, again, yeah, thank you for that question as well. Now, Tyler, did you want to do our mini comic discussion, or do you want to go into the character next? Because we'll, we'll go into the mini comic discussion first. Okay. Well, we're going to be discussing the vengeance of Skeletor. Now, ah, yeah, there you go. Is that your uh, childhood one too? Because this is my childhood one. No, I didn't have it as a kid. Actually, uh, this is a extra copy that uh, Nathan, our buddy from Beyond Retro, picked up for me. Uh, his parents got it at a film market they gave to him, and he's like, you know what? I think Tyler might want this. I'm like, well, shoot, I'm glad to take another copy from you. So this okay. is a next copy he gave to me. So, Okay, well, here's the thing I have a question for. In that comic, or whether it's the mini comic book, what does seven, page 7, 8, and 9 look like? I'm just curious in yours. Like, tell me the main picture you see on page 7. And then eight, and then nine. I just I want to see something. Page yeah. seven is He Man fighting uh, Merman and Beast Man. He's throwing Merman. Page eight is uh, is uh, Tila arriving on her horse uh, and seeing He Man being uh, carried away with uh, what appears to be Skeletor lying on the ground. Uh huh. I'm going to get to that too later. Yes, remember that. Okay. And in page nine, is it Merman throwing He Man in the water? Yes. Is Okay, so I'm assuming that is how this comic should be. There's no missing pages or nothing. I, okay, everybody, that's the reason I'm bringing this up. A lot of people refer to the four original mini comics as being their absolute canon. I've heard, and I'm sure you guys in the chat room have as well, there are so many fans that said, this is all they consider their canon, are these four mini comics. They say anything past that is garbage. It isn't He-Man to them, meaning the other mini comics the cartoon, so many people say they hate filmation. It's not what they remember. Well, don't get me wrong. I love 
all the comics. You know, there's uh, sure there's exceptions like you know the, the original Leech one and Mantana. There's some doozies, but um, you know th these first four, beautiful. I mean, Alfredo Alcala, beautiful art. But remember, these are more storybook. You know, it, it's not like a mini comic. It's like story. Ella even says on the book on the cover, illustrated book. Oh, there you go. Okay, so there you go. Illustrating the like storybooks. So what they're doing is they're trying to put as much information as they can onto one page and just describe it with one picture. Meaning you look like you might be reading like, wait, what are they talking about? But as you get to the end, you're like, oh, now it happened. These mini comics, I've even asked the people who said they quote these as being the best canons and everything. I'm like, tell me about them. Tell me about the Vengeance Skeletor. Tell me about He-Man and the Power Sword. Tell me about King of Castle Grey Skull, Battle in the Clouds. They can never tell me the stories. They always will say, well, the art was amazing. Trust me, you go back and read these stories, they're some of the most confusing. I don't even know what the hell's going on half the time. Like, you know, when they're just first, not only when they describe stuff, but, well, yeah, describing not only what you're seeing, but things that I'm wondering, what just happened? Like, there's... Okay, there's one part in this comic where they're showing Beast Man. He's blasting out of his hand some energy. He's blasting energy. But it's described as Beast Man's weapon blaze that he's shooting energy out of his weapon. I'm like, what the heck? What weapon? Am I, am I missing something? I'm looking for this magical weapon. There is no weapon. But it, the same thing where I think with us, I don't know if it's Stratos later, where he's shooting out something, but it looks like energy, but they considered it fire. Then, okay, here's the page. On page seven, well, first of all, Skeletor in this mini comment, he, he's tired of Phelan and He-Man always, you know, getting the best of them. So he calls upon his two best warriors, Beast Man and Merman, to help him, you know, kill. I mean, they mentioned Guy in this. So yeah, Skeletor once he-man dead and see i like the shirt i like the tones of these but it just sometimes it's just so written i'm i'm lost like that page where beast man shot a blast of energy at him and he-man said you never learn he sidesteps the weapon but it says however he-man's boast was cut short by another burst from beast man's powerful weapon and then it says on the next page the sounds of battle were heard beyond the ridge Tila riding her galloping horse arrived on the scene to see Beast Man regaining his senses. I was like, okay, when between seven and eight, when did that happen? When did He Man knock out Beast Man? Because I sure didn't see it happen. But then Merman gets the best of He Man. I mean, well, I guess Merman's just picking up He Man, who I assume got blasted and knocked out from Beast Man. But then they show on that page Skeletor laying. I was like, where was Skeletor wasn't even in this scene. He was nowhere. Skeletor was not in this scene with uh, you go on because I'm going to get to more. Don't get me wrong, people. I love well, the no, mini comics. No, Skeletor is not supposed, I mean, you know, but when, when you point out these things, I mean, for I think a lot of people, plus we're also dealing with people who who's it's, it's so much easier to sit there and say you like this just like it is saying the He-Man movie from 87 sucks. It's the cliche, <laughs> cool thing to say to make it sound like you're in the in crowd of the He-Man fan community by so many people say that movie sucks. So many people say that these mini comics are the defendant, which look people, it's all right to think that these are the, if, they, if this is, then you know what? That is perfectly fine. But when you're like Joe said, when, when you're asked why, you know, these mini comics were done when nobody knew who was good or bad when this toilet was being developed. Hell, I don't think Mattel, Paul Dini even said it. So the Mattel executives had no idea who is good? Who is evil? Just put him in the story. Which is why you'd see in He-Man the Power Sword, Stratus is clearly standing with Skeletor in the Evil Wars because he originally was going to be evil at one point. <laughs> Same thing with Zodak. You don't know what the hell's going on with him. And with, with these two, it's it's I'm sure is uh, Mr. Alcala is, is given like uh, the basic story. He's given certain images to draw. They clearly don't match the story at times. Not, not right. all the time, but a good amount, a good amount, though. But you're right. That's what I mean. It's like he's drawing them, but you figure the person is right. It's like, could you write it to match the pictures to make sense? Because Skeletor was not engaged at all here. He hired or he told Beast Man and Merman to go to find He-Man. So he's not involved in any of this. And so 
That's I was like, why is he laying there? What is this weapon? They're describing it as a weapon when it's just a beast man shooting energy out of his hand. That's why I want people to go back, really read this. For everybody that says these are the definitive, which again, just like Tyler said and I said earlier, if you like them, great. But read this stuff and you're going to see they're really confusing. I mean, there's a lot of stuff that is not matching up to anything that you're looking at. But go ahead with more. I mean, like I said, it's still cool, but it does have some parts that make you go, hmm. Uh, I mean, it's just one of those things where I look at these and it's it's like the prototype of what we've come to expect. You know, we, I mean, Castle Grayskull has no sorceress or real guardian. It's a spirit that resides in it. You know, it's, what you know, Fortress of Mystery and Power. That, that's played up still. And just the, you know, everybody's got magic. For, for someone like Beastman to be able to fire random blasts out of his, his hands, I guess just when the story calls for it. I mean, it's... It's, you know, and for all we know is that, you know, Alcala may have been drawing these, you know, while the story is being written. And why, and that's when the, the, the writer says that he's got a weapon he's using. And, you know, it probably Alcala has no idea what these guys can do. He's probably just given the figures these, in this mythical world where you've got multiple planets in the background of, of God knows what. Everybody can do anything almost. Everyone's quite strong. So it's, you just kind of feel like they don't know because Mattel doesn't know. So I, I, I forgive all, everything that happens in this. I look at none of it as real faults because, you know, you, you dig enough and research enough, you find out that, you know, this, this line was evolving along with the toys, you know, that the story was, you know, we don't know. Uh, he's a good guy. You know, make him a good guy, you know, it's, which I think is a fascinating thing about this toy line is that so much was changing, you know, it's, it's, they're for all forgivable mistakes. I don't see anything in here that was just not a sign of, of this, these characters that. Well, true. No, you're right. I mean, it is, it's like, they're all, you know, they're learning together. It makes you wonder, did they write the story first? Was the art you know, drawn first? Was it drawn and written together? Was there slight little, you know, miscommunication? Yeah, I, I wouldn't be surprised if this was drawn first, which would explain why, okay, we got to explain why Beastman is firing something out of his hand, out of his weapon. We don't know. There's nothing there. Yeah. Say it's a weapon, you know. You, see, you just that's what I meant. That's why I, it, my first thought was possibly, let's say they, let's say they drew it first. I figured whoever was writing should have made some things flow better because like i said some what i mean is again cool stories but for people that make it sound like they're the greatest written and looking it's like no believe me there's a lot of mini comics that came a lot later in these that have some fantastic stories and have great art as well and i feel like are written a lot better but there's just so many parts in this where it's like, I don't know what happened with Beastman from one part to another part, especially when he defeats He-Man, but then they say Beastman is laying unconscious. And then we see Skeletor. And then these descriptions of shooting energy out of weapons when it's hands. And they do have quite a few of those, but I like that, okay, even Stratos shoots energy out of his hands, but they describe it as fire. I admit there's one thing I do like. I didn't know if you guys knew, but um, it was in what page was it? Uh, page 17. It's cool. You hear a little more about Merman's weapon, which you don't hear too often. He shoots out water, seawater, out of his uh, weapon, out of his sword. And I guess when it makes contact with anything, it turns it to ice. So that's how he was able to defeat Stratos. He shot this. He shot his, you know, his corn sword, as people like calling it the corn sword or whatever. <laughs> He shot it, and the waters from that ocean instantly turned it to ice. But that also helped him later because you see some of the the evil intent of Skeletor. So, like, I do like the intentions of the characters. I love how evil Skeletor is portrayed because he is just pure evil. There is no Keldor thing. This is just an evil, evil demon. He's he's disappointed, obviously, in the failure of Beast Man and Merman, to where Skeletor uses his energy blade to shoot at Merman. In the description, was it said? Once he shot him with that, it said it was so intense was the heat that it dried up the moisture in Merman's scaly hide, and the man of sea felt himself slowly dying. Skeletor was killing Merman. It's like, this was nuts. But in an act of kindness, for those who say that the original He-Man was 
all Conan, all barbaric. He wasn't the Boy Scout that helped. He-Man knew that was wrong, what was happening. He didn't even want to see in this early, early mini comic. Didn't want to see Merman die, so he rams his battle ram or rams that into Skeletor to save Merman. And then Merman uses the sword on himself to get the powers of, you know, the sea to regenerate him. But he basically tells He-Man, you'll regret it. I like that. It's like, it's cool. Like, even though He-Man saved Merman and Merman's healing himself, Merman even says, you'll regret it. Like, you shouldn't even have saved me. I still, I thought that was pretty cool, too. Yeah, I mean, he does that in Tila's Quest, you know, where he's begging for help. He-Man helps him, and then he says, thanks for the rescue, and I'll save yourself, as he, you know, laughs and runs off. But, um, I mean, it, it, there, there's a lot of simplistic charm to the way that the villains are portrayed. I mean, I, me personally, I'm not a fan of everybody shooting blasts out of their hands. I like the idea of Beastman and Merman, you know, being a character themselves that don't have projectile blasts. Beastman is a savage you know, muscular, brute strength beast, you know, that in this canon, he you don't really see him as someone who controls animals. He's just this brute that follows Skeletor, hangs out in the jungles, and will just, you know, go one-on-one -on -one with He-Man and get his ass kicked. And Merman's, you know, he lives in the water, and he can come... I mean, I, I just... I I just, uh, you know, there, it's, it's, sim it's simple, but... Um, I mean, I'm glad a lot of this stuff was changed to where, you know, I mean, what the Stratos has seen, Fire and Blast, you'd see that in the Filmation uh, cartoon as well, like Disappearing Act, prime example, where he's firing blasts, which I'm like, I don't mind one character, but I mean, it just doesn't look right to see, you know, uh, Beastman firing and Blast. You could get away with that with Merman with his sword, but even then... I still like the idea. No, it's a sword made of coral, you know, sharp coral that, that he's going to engage in battle with and not something that shoots projectiles. Like, that ought to be something that Skeletor handles, you know, the guy who uses magical blasts and things like that. Just fanboy nitpicking to me, but, I mean, all these original four stories, they're, they're, they're fun, simple little stories. I mean, these were meant for kids, you know, so we, we, we can't tear them apart and pick on them, but, you know, everybody can, and Oh, sure. I mean, everybody will do it with everything from the Filmation cartoon to these. Which I, it still burns me up to this day that, I mean, people love to tear, tear apart mini comics, tear apart Filmation, tear apart this and tear apart that as if like, you know, you know, and I'm sure most of them have never even picked up a damn thing to look or look at or have watched the Filmation cartoon in certain years. And they're just going by the. I, you know, people who listen to this podcast, they may get tired of us repeating certain aspects, but damn it, man, I'm, I'm sick and tired of of lazy opinions you know it's it's one thing you know if you if this is definitive to you be thorough about your answer you know don't 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 tear apart filmation and say that this is the real deal he-man all right well if it is which is fine make joe happy and tell him why you know if you just like the artwork that's fine too no but, it's you know, don't yeah don't don't sit there and say that you know that i mean it's okay no, you're I right. What, I, as I'm, what I'm trying to say is, like always, we don't want to, to alienate any fan for liking whatever, you know. But right. it's it's always feels like, you know, sh shed a little light on why you feel this way. And don't feel so quick to not feel Mason something because you saw him make fun of it on Family Guy. And like, oh, yeah, I remember that cartoon was pretty cheesy, wasn't it? Yeah, it's stupid. This is the real He-Man here. You yeah, because like, I guess that's all I was getting at. You're right. It, it's how we said earlier. Everybody can love everything because we love the mini comics, the cartoons, anything you can think of. But it's it's if you're going to make a comparison, meaning I've heard so many people say these four mini comics have the best stories and all the Filmation's episodes are corny compared to this and they can't, yep. you know, hold yep. a candle. These stories are so great. I'm saying, okay, you know, if you're saying that, tell me why this is so great. Because some people even accuse me saying, Joe, you just like the original comics as well. And that's why I didn't pick this to pick on it. I just wanted to show while it's still beautiful to look at and has a good basic story, there are a lot of flaws for people who say this is the stuff that's all perfection, basically, in their eyes. It's perfection. There are no flaws. It's like 
go back and look at these and you'll see there's flaws in these just like later mini comics like the filmation episode like myp everything has flaws and everything has positive effects too nothing's perfect that's all i was basically wanted to point out is these aren't perfect just like nothing is perfect in masters or any kind of like cartoon comic canons from any properties so yeah, I just had to bring up, like, you know, one other little, not to be a nitpick, but just one other thing. In this mini comic, besides the cover, was showing He Man with that axe. He Man is not shown to have a weapon in the entire mini comic. In the entire, and at the end, the last page, it says that together, He Man, Tila, and Shadows trained their weapons on the villains and shot these blasts of energy. You still can't see a weapon from He-Man. I was like, I don't even see a weapon from He-Man. What do you mean? It's Stratos and Tila shooting blasts. So again, I could be nitpicky there, but that's what I mean. I Again, I think that another thing sometimes is, you know, people get dazzled by art. And this is, I'll admit, it is breathtaking to look at the art. And I think maybe they confuse the art and story all together and assume that it's all, you know, perfection. And, you know, so sure, there might be people that don't like the Alcala art, but I love it. And it's beautiful, but... It, it does have its flaws, just like everything else. And like I said, just trying to say nothing out there is perfect. So if you guys want, you know, go back and read these four, you know, four mini comics and you'll see there's always questionable stuff. But it's still fun. Don't get me wrong. I ain't saying this. I would spot. argue just to be a just to be a prick about that, there are some perfect uh pieces done in Master of the Universe. Are I you think. gonna say Clash of Arms? Are you gonna bring up Clash of Arms? Because that was good. <laughs> it was but, good. You know, I mean I don't want to, you know, be its own personal spokesperson, but but yes, Clash of Arms is a work of art. I've said it before; it's the greatest piece of American literature, or best best piece of written literature. Just put it that way, because people in various countries have all got that mini comic as well in various languages. It is <laughs> yeah. by far the best. It is great. But, no, it is good. Because, of, because there are some genuinely really good stories of Master of the Universe. I mean, there is perfection done. The entire run of mini comics, no, is not perfect. The same thing with Filmation, the same thing with the Golden Books, the same thing with New Adventures, the same thing with NYP. There is no entire run of perfection. There's always going to be flaws, flaws in it. Same thing goes for Transformers and Thundercats and Turtles and G.I. Joe and the various other, you know, popular, you know, um, uh, toy lines and series and things like that. There's going to be does. There always is. It's unfortunate. It's just kind of the nature of the beast, but... Um, you could, I mean, you could say that, you know, the, the good outweighs the bad in a lot of this stuff, but, um, but I, I always just look at these four many these many books, many comics is, is just like where Mattel was trying to figure out where they're going with this. I think the next batch, you know, that was done by, uh, uh, you know, Texera? Mark Texera. Yeah. I, I really feel like that's when they're really finding their footing where there's still a lot of elements and, and uh, primitive aspects of Master of the Universe that are in these and in the Texera run. And then it, it gradually grows from there on, you know, there, uh, you know, from the dialogue changing to a little bit more contemporary as opposed to Hulk, you know, who, who thou, you know, used my last, you know, bit of toilet paper. Um, you know, and I feel like we get that kind of like, uh, articulation or, or language i feel like that was more in you're right the texera the dc stuff because in these Al alcala ones i don't think i ever got that kind of thou oh, well, it's going more, more describing what's going on as opposed to a lot of dialogue which, right little bits of lines yeah it was more descriptive that yeah you kind of feel like that was you know dc you know feeling like okay this, you know because it's in the three-part miniseries as well people are talking like that i'm glad that was gone too you know i i don't don't want to hear people talking like they're you know, doing a Shakespearean play. Um, One other so, thing I wanted to bring up, what keeps me from always saying, I never look at these as barbaric and Conan, as others say too. They're like, this is when He-Man was barbaric and it was like Conan. I was like, um, I don't think I was seeing vehicles and all these magical, you know, like you said, certain weapons and powers and energy blasts and things flying in the air. It's like, no, I don't think of Conan at all. If you guys are referring to the one time you've seen He-Man when he was looking savage-like and fighting that monster when the goddess gave him his weapons, okay, for a few seconds, you've seen him looking savage. But after that, he's got force field vests. He's got power vests. There's 
there's all these, you know, science and magic and stuff. Yeah, this is what separates it from Conan. I never still thought, hey, this feels like Conan stuff. I almost and, feel like when they're saying Conan, they're probably thinking the way He-Man is drawn. Which yeah, that's is, all I can think. It's not very, not polished. You know, uh, Kyle, what, what makes his over beautiful, it's rough. You know, the characters look a lot more grittier and, and rough looking, you know. Just, just with the way it's, you know, possibly. I mean, hell, art, artists, you know, can describe that better. But I, I kind of felt like it's rougher, you know, maybe in kind of in vein of uh, maybe you can almost say it like a Frank Frazetta, even though his was all paintings. No, true. It, it is the art. I think that yeah, it's. I always think it is just the art. That's why. That's why we like discussing everything. You know, not always saying you guys have to agree with everything we say, but that's why yeah. I think it's good to bring up stories. Um, yeah, because once you see the stories, you're like, see, that's why I think people need to read these more and just not look at the beautiful art. Because once they read it, I think their thoughts of Conan start slowly going away because if they're just going by the art and looking, sure, I can understand, like you said, the style possibly. But once you read this, your thoughts of Conan are gone. That's why I never, I mean, I always read these as a kid and, uh, you know, I read it all and I never got the Conan feel because of reading. But it's possible, that, yes, just by looking. I could say, damn, that looks like you said for Zeta style. And uh, eh, you never know. I mean, hell, I got knives. I mean, it's, it's, it's an interesting conversation because, I mean, yeah, they, they are. I think it's great that there are certain elements of Heman that are heavily celebrated. I think that's a wonderful uh, uh, aspect about the fan community is that, you know, there's certain things that people absolutely love. There's certain things, although I do feel like the things people dump on are treated unfairly like I, I i think it's great for people to like something more than others but i don't feel like it's right for certain things to be you know disregarded or looked upon as like well that doesn't count like like meteorbs or stink or or various you know ideas and thoughts king grayskull which that needs to be dead and buried you know? and, and a character will be getting to soon you're right there's certain things that when we yeah yeah, I, I just, I feel like it's not, and I, you know, call me a hypocrite. I can make a, a, a better argument that King Grayskull has got no business being part of the Master Universe mythology, as opposed to someone who wants to sit there and say a certain elephant-headed character or a, a skunk man or Stratus, because his figure's boring, you know, or something like that. I, I you know, I just kind of feel like, you know, there's there's a lot of room for original characters. King Grayskull is not original. It's a lazy ass creation that was done. Um, I just like slamming that character anyway. I can yeah. tell. Like I just I got that feeling. But you're right. I that's what was great about our imaginations. When we got all those toys as a kid, we went with it. We didn't look at anything. And usually, as a kid, say, I don't believe that belongs in Masters. It's like I said, look at the world of what we have. We have bee people, you know, buzz off, if you will. Like you said, there's Roboto. There's all sorts of things you could say don't belong. So then we come to Snout Spout, one of the later lines, of course, you know, wait, later waves as it's starting to get towards possibly the end. And these are starting to be like, oh, man, they're, they're pulling for teeth. You know, they're creating characters that make no sense. An elephant-headed guy? How does he belong in Masters? And again, look at all the previous stuff. You could say that for anybody mecha neck you could say what does a mechanical neck with a guy with a periscope who can see like hundreds of miles away what is he doing in masters I mean, you can say it about any of them but that's why it's just a world of fantasy and imagination and just you making the stories to have things belong and snout spot was a character that yeah he i guess didn't have an origin pretty much that you could well in the uk i know they did a great origin story but as for the figure i know we've seen him um uh, couple mini comics of one specific but i know i don't i still don't think he had an origin in the mini comics from the no. u.s correct okay so we sometimes i think relate to origins whether we see it in the mini comic or if he had a great background story in the cartoon which obviously he did not and he was hose nose in the cartoon but it's a character i i never hated him i never questioned why is he in this line i remember loving the damn toy and and you know i think that's going off of the gimmicks of Hell, everybody in, in the world had a squirt gun, it seemed like. I love squirt guns. Who didn't like a figure that would squirt? I mean, hell, we love Dragon Blaster Skeletor. We love Cobra Khan. We like this little mist. I mean, 
So what's so far-fetched about now having an elephant, mechanical elephant-headed warrior shooting water out? And maybe somebody that, you know, looks like, oh, he could be like a version of a firefighter. But I had a blast, of, you know, with the toy. And then the, I see, like, seeing him in the mini comics, seeing him in the cartoon. Like you said, it wasn't eventful, but I never questioned or hated Snout's Pop. I love Snout's Pop. Yeah, and, and not, not to say, too, um, to expand on this whole idea of, of people saying certain characters don't belong. I was aware of Snout Spot as a youngster, but it, you know, of course, I, w- I wasn't aware of his name for God. It was probably probably till I got my first toy guide and saw a list of all. I just knew him as the elephant-headed guy, and I, I thought he looks immensely cool. I just thought this guy's look. I was like a, a, a cool-looking elephant guy, and it's a cybernetic elephant. You know, the whole head is is, is made. It looks like it's made out of robotics, and uh, I mean, when you've got a fish guy, a, a, a lobster guy, a spider-like guy, yeah. a snake guy, yeah. an or- a, a beast with orange and you know orange fur and, and red armor. You've got a bee guy. You've got uh, a skunk uh, guy. I mean, uh, <laughs> a skunk guy, a guy that was originally a porcupine in, in Spike Or. Yeah, and to sit there and say that wait, there is no room for an elephant <laughs> in Masters of the Universe, let alone an elephant that comes with a fireman's axe. You know, it can shoot water out of his nose. I mean, I, I've always been, I'm under the impression that this guy, when he blasts water out of his trunk, it's like being hit by a fire hose. And if anybody's been yeah. hit by the impact of a fire hose, <laughs> right. you're not getting up from it. So uh, you, when you've got someone running into battle, firing, you know, intense blasts of water, you're going to get knocked on your ass. Yeah. You're going to have damaged eardrums if you get hit in the ear with it. It's not like know? they're pulling out a hose, the garden hose, and just squirting you. You know, you're right. It's a force. It's a powerful force that you would get blasted with. And like you said, because you're, yes, he has that axe. So you're assuming, yes, this is kind of like an attorney, and, well, attorney and firefighter. But yes, if he's going to blast you with that, you're going to get hurt. And he's going to blast you probably 100 feet back. He's going to get you with a good shot. I'll admit, I liked how now the UK. You know, I liked how they tried to expand upon, you know, the characters that we didn't get many origins for. And Snout Spout was one of them. Snout Spout in the UK stories was, he was an attorney, I think, peasant. And he, believe it or not, he looked like He-Man. I always got a yeah. kick out of it. Yeah, he looked like He-Man. And Hordak captured him to do his experiments. And he's the one that turned him into Snout Spout. And he wanted him to work for the Horde. And he was going to use, like, a spell to keep him under his, you know, control. But Snout Spout had so much hate for Hordak that that didn't work. But he still let Hordak train him of all these new abilities and how to use his, you know, new gimmick, his new gear. So then he could turn it against the Horde and use his new gifts to fight for good. And you seen that, yes, he has his water blast, but it looked like he even had like some kind of laser beam or some other thing. Like he had a couple other abilities. Things that shot out of his nose, so they tried to that, That's that's stretching it a bit. I, it's I, stretching, I, but still cool. They tried, but I did like that. Hey, they gave an order. I mean, it's like, damn, you think about it. I was like, Hordak was experimenting on everybody on Drag Store, Extendar, and his snout, uh, snout spout. But I like that they tried to give him a story because maybe they were wanting to make him more appealing to maybe those who didn't like him. But I couldn't picture a kid even, like I said, in the UK when they were getting, I couldn't picture them saying, oh, I hate Snout Spout. But it's fun to think that he had a cool story and origin there. But I, I also kind of like the idea that this is a, you know, and I, it's, it's just like with so many characters, like some I don't mind getting origins to. Snout Spout is one I don't, don't need to know. I like to think that he is a, you know, like a lot of these characters, they, they are a combination of animal and man, but we don't, I don't like to think of them as like, you know, there's some sort of bestiality going on as to how clawful and, you know, Webster came to be when they, they have arms and legs that are very human like, but their feet and their hands are different and they've got fins on their arms and, but they've got an animal like head. And it's just one of those things I'm like, I don't need to know an explanation for a lot of this stuff. And, and in Snout Spout is one of those characters that, I like to think of is an elephant man, so to speak. Like how clawful is a crab slash lobster, you know, a humanoid. Snout spout is like a humanoid of an elephant, except his head is 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 made up of robotics. Um, almost kind of like how Rotar was given the 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 the, uh, 
what, what's the, what do you call it? The, cybernetics uh, or something? The, the cybernetic, you know, uh, enhancements. That's what Snout Spout was given. That he is a elephant humanoid that was given enhancements to it, probably maybe a damaged head if you have to give an origin. But it just looks cool. Mm-hmm. It just looks cool to have a, an elephant man with a cybernetic head who could probably intensify the pressure coming out of his trunk, probably with the cybernetics that he's got on his head. You know, probably strong as hell with him being an elephant man in, in, that, in that sense. You got this guy swinging an, an axe at you. You know, it's and I hated hated it when I I, I got the Eye of the Storm mini comic and saw that he's being played off as as if like the people at Mattel were like, you know, write him as this pitiful character because we were like we think he's a stupid character too. So write him in the story like that, but have him come out thinking that he's confident in himself because we don't want to give children the wrong impression. You know, I hate it, man. I hate it, hate it, hate it when they do that with these these characters that look. The more badass than I could ever imagine. Snout Spout and Mechanic and Stinker, all these guys, you know, they they deserve to be treated with the same amount of respect and attention and love that you would give He-Man Skeletor and your your the standard heroes and villains. I mean, I I, I hold them in the same way, if, if not sometimes even higher. Did they if, ever say why he was called Hose Nose in the cartoon? Did that that was a, that was an original. That was the 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 working name for the character at that time was Hose Nose. So that's why it's it's that. And then I'm sure it's corrected in filmation. You know, we're just they just go along with the change. Much like while Colonel Blast looks nothing like Rio Blast, other than the multiple guns popping out of his joints, Tongue Lasher looks the way that he does. It's an ever growing process, just like. These min- these first four mini comics, where the process was always changing all the time, which makes it such an interesting property that everything was being changed as we're getting new episodes, as we're getting new toys. The mini comics themselves, like in Revenge of the Snake Men, Squeeze is known as Tanglor, or yep. uh, Cyclone in Spike Strikes is known as uh, Tornado. There's changes all over the place, yeah. you know, and it's, oh, no. it's fascinating. Yeah, because I would have loved. Would have loved to see. Always knows is a good name too, but I like Snout Spout. Snout Spout, yeah. Mind. I'm happy with Snout Spout. Exactly. Oh, I'm I'm a I enjoy that name so much more, and I really would have wished again. It's always the sadness, but we always have to bring it up with the comparisons. Then we got that staction of Snout Spout. Which, oh oh yeah. wow! Yes. Now talk about an upgrade. And so many people that weren't a fan of the toy, they sure love that staction, which makes you think, man. Oh, if he could have appeared in the MYP cartoon, what they could have had planned for him. I He looks so badass as that staction that you know he would have looked like that in the MYP cartoon. And they would have definitely not had him joked up as a goof character. He probably would have been doing some cool stuff if they, oh man, it's just, it's horrible we couldn't have got him. It's horrible yeah, we the, didn't get him in. I, I wouldn't, wouldn't mind too in, in future um canons if, if uh, you know, with, with whatever we got, if, that, if they were to use that interpretation sounds because they even changed his feet too like he doesn't have human feet he had elephant feet which i thought was a cool uh addition to that figure and and of course the eyes on the original figure look kind of sad looking he looks angry at this the staction yeah he's a dash look pissed he does you know? it all intense and talk about cybernetics he looks like he has more cybernetics i mean he yeah. just looked he looked jacked i mean if anybody hasn't had that staction go find that on ebay you you've Oh, you'd love the yeah. stash. Or find the artwork that Emiliano did for the for the backs of those stashes. Yeah. Mean, yeah. I mean, it's it, they, like I said, every character they may not have been interpreted the best, but there's always a diamond in the rough with every one of these characters. If you didn't like New Adventures characters in the cartoon, look at the toys. Look at the initial design of these characters, and there's something better to be portrayed there. Much like with Snout Spot, if you don't. You, you you don't quite see that. Look at the way Emiliano drew it. Look at how the four horsemen did the action, and you'll see that there is a badass character under this idea that you think is silly and doesn't doesn't fit. It doesn't work. And I'm I'm sorry. I look at everything on this vintage shelf up here above my head here. Everything from Gray Skull to Snake Mountain and everything in between. It all fits. There's a place and a. a a position for every hero and villain on that shelf. I, there's not a single person that doesn't belong up there. It's just a shame we didn't get any more. And yeah. Snout Spout, damn it, man, I'm, I'm so fed up with people um, labeling him as, as such a uh, 
a, a less than needed character. Like he's someone that everybody's so quick to disregard. Oh, he'll show up on some douchebags, you know, top 10 lamest He-Man character list. I hate those lists. Get, I hate you know, list. all those jerk offs who come up with this list. They have nothing to do with the He-Man fan community, but there's some jackass on some, uh, uh, toy yeah. website, you know, some guy decides, oh man, my, my, what I have to say matters. Oh, there's some really dumbass characters in He-Man. I'm going to make fun of them on my top 10 list, you know. And what sucks is the people that share and agree. Uh, like, yeah, they, yeah, you got a lot of people who were so influenced by those dumbass, you know, lists that some idiot made. So they go on and carry on that mindset because of that jerk off. Yeah. You know? And it happens all the time. You know, it'll pop up in my Facebook feed. It's like a suggested uh, because it's about He Man or someone will share it. And then I just want to strangle the person who put it together because. Oh, no, it's no, it's true. And well, like, um, well, Tom Charlton, he uh, asked in the chat room, he said, Here's another question for you. He says, Do the He Man things need to be serious and badass? He said he, he enjoyed the kind of silly nature of lots of them. Well, no, that's the thing. No, we're not saying they all have to be badass. I mean, we enjoy, like we said, of every aspect. That's why we're saying we love Snout's and how he was originally. And sure, I loved how he looked more intense and badass. But sometimes yeah. what's sad is some people are only dazzled by the badass feature because when they think, oh, you know, Snout's Pot looked goofy. He was silly. He was stupid in the cartoon. I didn't like him in the comics. But then if they see the stack, they're like, oh my god. It's like, so unfortunately, sometimes you have to shock some people with a badass look to suck them in and then they can look back and say, you know what? That vintage toy, that was actually pretty cool. Hey, that comic wasn't that bad. That's what I mean. You just gotta suck them in. Like well, yeah, I said, I mean me, in my opinion, the vintage toy line, everyone's badass. There isn't a lame ass character. Oh, I love them all. I love them. Yeah, I you love know, all of them. All of them. And when I say badass, I meant I meant portrayed in a very competent and respectful manner, not treated as a joke. You know, someone who's you know, oh, like I mean, an easy example to go to is Spike or the way Spike or was portrayed in Filmation. You see how he's portrayed in Spike or Strikes. Or you see the the staction concept that the four horsemen were going to do for for uh, Spike Or is a very serious looking character, and when you see him portrayed as you know a guy with a very bad you know speech impediment and just silly and stupid in in the games episode, you, you kind of feel like that's not what I imagine this character to be portrayed as. You know, I even though the cartoons were meant for kids, I'd like to think of the villains as being very competent people, that they're not morons, you know, and, you know, but unfortunately they're doing it for comic relief for kids because of all the pissy parents thinking it's going to promote devil worship and witchcraft. But I, I don't, I don't like my characters in He-Man being portrayed anything less than competent people. You know, I don't mind, you know, Orko does some silly stuff, but I don't like him being portrayed as like this, you know, uh, I mean, just, uh, you know, a, a mole on your ass, you know, so, you know, I hate that people would dump on him. I hate how they dump on Snout Spout and Stinkor. Uh, I, I like everybody to be portrayed as, you know what, when they're on screen, you're not biting your teeth or rolling your eyes. You're like, oh, God, here he is again. I don't want that. I mean, can you honestly say that all these characters wouldn't look cool in a new cartoon the way that the, the, the horsemen have classicized everybody? Everybody looks really good, aside from the you know the minor bitching and nitpicks that some people do about ankle articulation and all the nonsense like that. But the overall visual standpoint, they all look great. <laughs> they, that's that's an homage. That's an homage to the some of the nitpicks. Could you imagine if they did a cartoon and they showed some of the characters that had the ankle articulation problems? Yeah, they, but they drove Roboto with reverse shoulders. Exactly, right? shoulders are first. Shoulders, and everyone's like, oh man. Oh, yeah. The, the 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 goddess when she's walking, you see just yeah, cracks of green. They, yeah, yeah, you they, see parts of green. Yeah, you see parts of green falling from her crotch. You're like, I don't understand what's going on because of her exploding crotch problem. Oh, that would be terrible. Reverse this, reverse shoulders. Oh, Jesus. But no, yeah. yeah so, so like I said, we do this. Like I said, we always just have fun because, like I said, we can dissect. We can always uh, give our opinions on anything. I still love, you know all this stuff but it just sometimes and, we and, and, and just to touch on you know and joe had mentioned you know uh, some other appearances uh snail spell's given a pretty good appearance in the the star uh comic the snakes alive where it's and i i like this because even though they came out the same year i like the idea of these guys being portrayed as as buddies is snout spout rio blast yeah. and extendar yeah 
are pretty much seen together as like a trio of buddies and that, that snout spout and Rio blast butt heads and that they, they don't quite, they're, they're, they're kind of hot headed. They're, they're, they're quick to temper. And, and I, I like that idea. So I, I mean, even on my shelf over here, I've got Rio blast snout spout. And I, I, initially I, I tweaked it up a little bit, but for the most part, I always depict the three of them together. I like the idea of just like with buzz off and mechanic is that they're buddies. They hang out all the time. And those three, I like linking them together as well. Not just because they came out in the same year, but I, when I saw that in that Star of Moloch, I'm like, I like that idea. I like the idea of, the, of those three working together. And then you see it on the Squeeze card back. They're all being attacked by Squeeze as if they were on patrol and got ambushed by Squeeze. Like, yeah. I just like that idea of those three guys together. Yep. And that, yeah, they definitely did a great on that card back art. And again, you know, we're not saying you have to love it. If you hate, still hate no, that no, but do it within reason. Don't just be a, you know, I think it's stupid. That's all. I just think it's stupid. It's <laughs> lame. Yeah, it's, it's, it's not barbaric enough. Yeah. Yeah. But hey, like I said, if they don't like it, hey, they, they can absolutely hate it because there's things we all love and hate. But it's but a snap. Even, I mean, I, mean I, I feel like there are, you know, here's a prime example. Because I was thinking about this today, I guess because of, of Snout Spout. There are multiple toy lines that people say reach a certain point that I feel like, no, no, I like like with G.I. Joe. They people will say that come eighty seven they jump the shark and they get ridiculous. No, I think the eighty seven wave of G.I. Joe was fantastic. They, I just feel like there's room to love a lot of these toy lines that they get different. They they spread out, they they spread their wings, the branches spread out, they they get a little different. You know, they don't have to be, you know, I think it's great that the way the He Man toy line went. I mean, can you honestly sit there and say that when you looked at Mosquito, or does that immediately you think that links up with the the beginnings of the ever changing, you know, beginning of the He Man toy line? Oh, I mean, it's like such a drastic, you know, look in comparison, don't you think? Yeah, I mean, when, when they came out, every time something came out, like you said, I mean, they definitely did start dazzling your eyes more. But it's just everything fit. No matter what I seen at the store, I got excited for and just welcomed it into the world of Masters of the Universe. Every single piece. I mean, that's how obsessed I was. And, you know, a lot of fans, you were just so obsessed on this toy line that when you went to the store, you went nuts for anything. And you yeah. bought it. And if it didn't have, you know, a, an origin in the mini comic and you didn't see it in the cartoon... I've said it before, you used your imagination as a kid and you made your own stories. When I seen the 10 meteors all together, I'm freaking out. I was like, what in the world? I was like, this says Masters of the Universe, but they look different. They're, they're all smaller. I remember flipping through the peg. I was like, one, two, three, four, five. You know, I wasn't even looking at the card back. You always, as a kid, looked at the front and flipped to see names. So I'm flipping through all the racks and I seen there was 10 of them. And I remember getting those for a special day too, but. I got all 10 of those things, took them home, had a blast transforming. I admit I didn't have tons of Transformers. So for me, when I got to Comet Roid and Gorilla, I was like, what in the hell? How do you transform these? Because the other ones were pretty easy. I was like, man, it's like a puzzle. But of course, Transformers fans would laugh at me thinking, you think that's difficult? Look at this. But Which is uh, yeah. why I didn't play with Transformers as a kid. <laughs> yeah, so I loved them. I loved anything that you put Masters on. And if it was a toy and it was part of that line, sign me up sign me up i was all over it so yeah snout spot i welcomed him just like every single character back then just i had so much fun with him so yeah i mean i i mean i think you look at the simplicity of, of, of stratos and then you look at how complex some something like mosquito and squeeze you know i mean when i say complex i don't mean complicated i mean whereas stratos had no gimmick it was just a figure and he said, with the, the carback says he's a winged warrior. That's it. Then you look at something like Mosquito and Squeeze and Scareglow. They've all got gimmicks. They've the all gimmicks, got, you know, you know, You're right. That's what started becoming like the basic real norm. Gimmicks started really taking over. Because you're right. When you look at the original figures from He-Man to Merman to whatever, Skeletor and all that, it was basically twist, power punch, twist, power punch, twist, power punch. And, you know, some of them had slight gimmicks, you know, Triclops with, you know, rotating the eyes, Ram Man coming. But the more it evolved, the more gimmicky it became. But you never questioned it because it just became more and more gimmicky. And you never sat there and said, this doesn't belong. But, well, that was Snout's problem. Like I said, had such a blast with him. And uh, 
Well, before we wrap it up, Tyler, you're going to have to tell the fans your trivia question. You got a trivia question for them to win a copy of the unofficial Leech mini comic. And if you have one in front of you, you can at least show them the cover to say, this is what you're going to be winning. All right, people. Don't let us down this week. You know, we're, we're going to, we want, we want people to win these things. So we're, we're not trying to deliberately uh, mess with you, but in case you uh, are forgetting the Leech, unofficial Leech mini comic, a reimagining of the uh, Leech uh, master of uh, power suction unleashed uh by uh Carson Clint Car- Carson how do you pronounce Carson's last name I'm sorry Carson <laughs> Joe jo is his last name more than I have Clinch Clinch and uh we're we're hoping to possibly do a little um uh, possible Q&A uh me and Carson for descendants of Grace Gulls Facebook page sometime later this week possibly next weekend uh we'll we'll sit and answer questions about it if people have any questions about it or anything like that as well but um, if you want to win a free copy of this, you know, you answer Joe's question and we'll, all, we'll do another one next week. So hopefully this week we'll have winners so we can start sending these things out. But, um, my, uh, trivia question is from the, to loosen up a little bit here for people comes from the first season of the she Princess of Power cartoon. And Leech says the line, Go away, clown. What episode does Leech say, go away, clown, and who does he say it to? And all you have to do is give me the name of the episode and the character he's talking to and post it on the Fans of Power Facebook page. Once again, the line is, go away, clown. Name of the episode, and who's he talking to? All right, and as you heard them, go to the Fans of Power podcast Facebook page. If you're the first person to just post there, right right now, right after the show, whenever you can, post there. First person to do it, you win a copy of the unofficial Leech mini comic. And all, excuse me. And also, when we get ready to get off here, I'm gonna post a picture of what I was describing last week on Fans of Power. And also, if you could say where this image comes from you'll win a copy of the unofficial each minute comic. So, but, uh, all right. Well, I, Tyler, before we wrap it up, I just want to thank absolutely everybody that was in the chat room with all your comments to your questions. You know, like I said, your banter back and forth. I hope you guys had a blast because we had so much fun having you here as well. And hopefully you'll join us here next week as well. But, uh, Tyler, any closing recommendations before we wrap the show up or you're good. Um, uh, again, I want to encourage uh, people who listen to uh, you know shout out to us for ideas and thoughts you want us to uh, discuss on the podcast or future episodes. We always want to keep fans participation. I think everybody who showed up tonight. So if you got questions and ideas or characters you want us to go revisit for whatever reason, you know, let us know. Um, I always want to encourage people to check out Kevin Sharp's artwork um, on Facebook and Deviant Art, and. Um, see you know check out joe's customs of course you know joe's always putting together some master master of the universe related uh stuff you know available on his uh facebook page there too so he's always taking orders and things like that make a good christmas present you know please please the special person in your life with a, a customized uh masterized uh figure of hell i don't know a smurf joe, joe, <laughs> joe's done there's plenty of times there yeah, um, but um, other than that, I think um, I think that's you know. Uh, okay. Uh, I'd, I'd say just go back and, and check out our back catalog of episodes, all available on YouTube, on Podbean, and on iTunes as well. Um, and uh, I think it's about uh, all we really got. Um, okay. Yeah, I think, I think it's about all I got, bud. All right. Well, thank you, Tyler. Appreciate that. And then, well, I'll tell everybody what to do. They can go to fansofpower.com, go to popculturenetwork.com, go to hemanworld.com, and on Facebook, go to Masters of the Universe, He Man is your ultimate fan group. All great places, all great people. So until next time, have a powerful day. The hospitality in this country is as warm as the weather. Hmm. Uh, he does it every week. Every week. It, and, and it's going to be a. You're not going to get it at all. Okay, what is it? It's uh, Morgan Freeman as Azim in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Oh, God, you're right. I wouldn't have got that. 
I don't know. I might have seen that movie one time in my life, but hey, one, some, one time, one time. That's it. Not saying it's bad. I just seen it one time. But God, man, how the hell <laughs> did you, you see Robin, the best Robin Hood movie ever made one time? Robin Hood Men in Tights is better. But well, okay, I'm, guys. I'm not going to argue with that because that's a kick-ass film too. So. I do. I love it. All right. Well, again, thank you everyone for joining us. Just glad to have you here in the chat room. Hope to see you next week. So see you guys next time. Later.